Hello, folks. Welcome to Cudlow. I'm Larry Cudlow, still out here in Simi Valley at the Reagan Library. So let's talk about last night's debate. I don't think there's any constructive point in criticizing the Republican candidates. They're all smart people. They're all conservatives. And apart from a few head-to-head -head explosions that we all could have done without, there was far more agreement on issues than disagreement. Energy, inflation, overregulation, wokeness, China warnings. The biggest division was probably over Ukraine. Now, you can be a little unfair and say there were no magical moment zinger lines, but you know, zingers are hard to come by. Now, here's one memorable line from Ronald Reagan, just to remind everyone of what a truly memorable line sounds like. Take a listen. Governor Reagan, again, typically, is against such a proposal. Governor, <laughs> there you go again. There you go. I'll tell you, that one is still playing 40 years later. Anyway, at different points in the debate, I think each of the candidates had their moments. I know the pundits are scrambling around to pick winners and losers, but honestly, I don't think anybody totally stood out. I don't think there were any real breakout breakouts. There may be some minor polling hiccups here and there, but frankly, the big picture doesn't change. Former President Donald Trump is still the overwhelming favorite to win the GOP nomination. He's the prohibitive favorite. I just don't think the debate last night, like the one before it, changes Mr. Trump's front-running status. Now, I was disappointed that there was no one who struck me as a real commander-in-chief of the economy or, for that matter, commander-in-chief of national security. I just didn't see that. Nor did I see any clear economic growth and prosperity messaging. No one really blasted the big government socialism of Bidenomics, nor did anyone really make a clear case for a return to free enterprise capitalism as an engine of growth and prosperity. No one really called for an across-the-board slashing of marginal tax rates to grow the economy at 4 or 5 or 6%. I was disappointed. I don't think anyone really convinced voters that the GOP will absolutely be the best stewards of future growth and prosperity. Now, again, there were snippets of this here and there. Over the two-hour period, you could see each candidate bucking in, but no comprehensive plan. No oomph. There was no real medium-rare steak that was so good I wanted to take home some slices and share it with my little doggy. You didn't wake up this morning with a single highlight in your brain. Now, I did have a couple of favorites to share with you, all right? For example, Senator Tim Scott bravely attacked the Great Society welfare spending that he believes was so damaging to African-American families. Take a listen to this. Here's the challenge, though. Black families survived slavery. We survived poll taxes and literacy tests. We survived discrimination being woven into the laws of our country. What was hard to survive was Johnson's Great Society, where they decided to put money, where they decided to take the black father out of the household to get a check in the mail. And you can now measure that in unemployment, in crime, in devastation. If you want to restore hope, you've got to restore the family, restore capitalism, and put Americans back at work together as one American family. Wow. You know, I, that is just heavy stuff. I just love what Tim Scott did. I totally agree with Senator Scott. I think, by the way, the data and the evidence completely supports his view regarding the economic, the family, and the societal damage of welfare spending. So that was a great moment. Probably no one's going to really, in the punditry, talk about it. The liberal media will hate it. Kudos to Sk Tim Scott for saying that. And then the closest thing I really saw to a comprehensive economic growth plan came from Vivek Ramaswamy. Take a listen to him. What we need is to deliver economic growth in this country, unlock American energy, drill, frack, burn coal, embrace nuclear energy, put people back to work by no longer paying them more money to stay at home, stabilize the U.S. dollar itself, and rescind a majority of those unconstitutional federal regulations that are hampering our economy. 
All right, that was well said and well packaged in, in one, you know, nice brief moment. Good for Vivek. Look, I don't think the others really disagree with him, but again, he put it together in a strong, hard hitting uh, fashion. Now, then again, look, it, debates don't decide primaries. Okay, polls don't decide primaries. So only voters decide primaries, and nobody's voted yet. So we're still early in the nominating process. All right. But frankly, I don't think last night's debate changed the fact that former President Trump has a very strong hold on the Republican Party. And that is my riff. That is